Okay, so today we're going to talk about balancing the individual components of the engine. This leads on from the video we did last week, which was a dynamic balancing video where we had it on our machine. Uh, here we're just going to uh, do static balancing of the components. What we need to do is essentially, by hook or by crook, make all of these components the same weight so that it doesn't affect the balance when it's in a dynamic situation. So the way I like to start, but there's loads of ways of doing this, but the way I normally start is I'll start with the con rods. Okay, so this old Ford con rod here, for example, what I would do is I first of all, I'd start off by putting the con rod on the, on the scales. I'd measure the total weight. I'd then like zero the scales. Then I get all the other con rods and put them on one by one. And I can see this con rod here is 0.8 grams lighter. And I keep doing that until I find the lightest rod. I then compare, put them in order of, of weight from the lightest to the heaviest. And then what we're trying to do is we're going to try and match them all to the lightest rod. So once I've done that process, the next thing I do is, I'll show you this other rod here, is I put them on the setup I've got here for measuring uh, the little end on its own. So put that on there. I'll get a reading, it's a 498. Again, uh, 499, 499, 498. Uh, it varies quite a bit and it's not, it's not super accurate. You're never gonna get it super accurate. This is the best way you can sort of achieve it. So I have a little like locating block here that meets the size of the little end. And then there's a uh, cut off scribe and it just rests on the, on the uh, crack with the, um, main cap fits, oh, sorry, the big end cap fits onto the rod. So you repeat that and then, so then what you do, you do that for every rod and then you put that next to the information you've just done for the, so you go, you know, from your lightest rod to your heaviest rod, you then put next to it the uh, weight of the little end and then you can subtract the weight of the uh, little end from the total weight you just measured earlier to give you the big end weight. So then once you've got all that information, you can then decide which end of the rod you need to take the weight from to balance them. Okay, I'll, I'll do all this in a second. We'll actually do it for real on this set of rods and you'll, you'll understand it better. Now, the trouble is, uh, well, with this rod, this, this like high performance rod we've got here, which come from the factory very well balanced. There's not a lot of places you can take weight from on this. You can't go removing this. Some people think, and they're wrong, that this is actually a place to remove weight from. This isn't, this is to increase the strength of the, of the big end. And this rod's already as light as it possibly can be, so you can't take anything off this. So instead, you remove it from the pin, from the gudgeon pin, like this. So here's a, here's a pin that's not been modified, and here's one that has. But for these old Ford rods, these have actually got places purposefully put on them at the factory to grind material off to balance them. So you can take plenty of weight off this, and you can take plenty of weight off this to balance them all end to end so that every rod is identical. That's a better way of doing it because then every single rod is identical and then you're not having to touch the gudgeon pin, although you might need to touch the gudgeon pin to balance the pistons, but we'll come to that in a minute. So to start with, let's do all these uh, rods here out this jag and then I'll explain what I've done and we'll go from there. Okay, so I've finished uh, doing all the measurements. I've got my uh, total weight. I can see from the heaviest uh, to the lightest, we've got a variation of 1.6 grams. So we need to make them all this weight. This is, that, this is the one we're aiming at here. So when I weighed the little end, we haven't got much variation actually. These rods are really well made. Normally I'd hope for a bit of a bigger variation than this. If I was doing these Ford rods, there'd be a much bigger variation. So 
you can say, okay, so this ends 240, and on this one it's uh, 238. So in this instance, we might probably want to remove um, the excess material from the little end in the, on this case. Uh, and on this case, um, in fact, they're all heavier on the little end than our control rod. So you, you probably want to move it all from the little end, which is good because it means we can remove it from the pin. Because like I said, we can't really touch these rods. So that's good. Okay, but otherwise, if, if you're having variation from the, this rod here and it's saying, oh, you want to take it off the big end, then you know, you'd have to take it off the big end, like I said before. Right, so that's, that's the rods. So the next thing to do is the pistons. So again, we've got these lovely JE pistons here. These are pretty well made as well. So we're probably not going to see much variation going on, but I have got some Ford rods over there. Not that I'm saying Ford's bad or anything. It's just like, it's an older engine. You know, it was, it was a, a road car, not a, not a high performance engine like this. It's got really expensive pistons and everything in it. Best thing is to measure it all separately. So measure the pins. They're almost always identical. It's very rare that they're going to vary at all, even by 0.1 of a gram. So we measure all, the, all of the pins. Then we measure all of the pistons as well and record that. And then we'll measure the rings. Again, the rings, it's really unusual that they, they vary. They're always pretty much the same. Uh, and then you also measure the little clips that hold the end of the, of the uh, ring, uh, the pin in, if it's a fully floating pin. Okay, so if we've done, done it with why we've balanced the rod separately, then we don't have to think about taking weight out of the pin to balance the rod. We worry about taking weight out of the pin perhaps to balance the piston. So if there's nothing, if there's nowhere in the piston to remove material, but because pistons are made out of aluminium and often there's nowhere to remove material from them without weakening them, the best thing is to do it out the pin. So if I show you, here's one I did earlier. So yeah, these are, these are Ford pins. And as you can see, that's an unmodified one. And that's one there that I've done. So it's just a die grinder and just go in there and just chamfer the edge in on both sides equally. And that's a good way of getting rid of uh, the weight without uh, reducing the strength of anything really. Okay, now just out of it, so for our interest, let's do a couple of these jag pistons. Okay, so there's one. Okay, so zero that. So I've got a variation of 0.2 of a gram on that. So that's pretty good. Let's do these two forward pistons. So zero that, put that one on. Okay, 18 grams. So it's quite a big, quite a big variation there. In the defense though, these two pistons have come from, uh, well, the same make of engine and everything, but they've come out of two separate built engines. So they, you know, this one was probably made a few years after this one. So there's likely to be a variation there. Um, so yeah, so that's that. And you can see these two pins. I've, so you can see how much I've taken out this pin, for example. I'll put that one on. That's an unmodified pin. That's one that's been modified. I've actually taken nine grams out of that. Um, so it just goes to show how much you can take out using the pin. Okay, so I've finished uh, measuring all the pistons, the pins. I've measured one set of rings because I haven't got the other set of rings right here at the moment. And it's just a demonstration. There is a small variation in the pins. So you've got about 0.2 of a gram. And because the pistons only vary a very small amount, you might be able to just swap pins around between pistons to get them to all match and be exactly the same. But once you've done that, then the, like I say, the only thing to do then is to take a bit of material out the inside of the pin. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have to take a lot at all because they're so close. And I mean, this is acceptable really, but you know, from my point of view, I try to get everything as absolutely perfect as possible. So I think that just about covers everything. Basically, to summarize, the main thing to do is to get everything matching, if possible, get the rods balanced end to end on their own, if they can be, if they can be done without weakening them. Uh, and then get all of the pistons weighing the same, uh, using the pins, mixing and matching. Uh, 
and then that's it. Then once you've got that all weighing the exact same weight, then you can then use the uh, information we found here, if it was a V engine, for example, to put into the, uh, to create the bob weights, which is in the other video. So thanks for watching this and uh, be sure to subscribe and watch more of our videos. Thank <laughs> you.